Today's video dedication is for Whiskey Jack. Khan versus Estrid. Yeah, an enchantress player probably isn't the best thing for us, but hmm, yeah, could get some stuff going there if we manage to crack the Wayfarer's Bauble. No reason why we shouldn't, so we'll try that. We are on the draw. Just a tap line from our opponent. We see a Foundry Inspector, which will make our artifacts cost one less. So get the Wayfarer's Bauble down. We're going to be taking a lot of damage to the Ancient Tomb. All right, and now just holding up some mana for us. Uh, Mask of Memory is not a land, so make one of those with the Wayfarer's Bauble. So hopefully we'll get into an untapped land next turn and we can play out the Thran Dynamo. That would accelerate us ahead quite nicely. It's an overgrowth onto the basics, so our opponent successfully ramping ahead. All right, and we do get into a Mishra's Workshop, which is probably one of the best lands that we could have got into there. So... Uh, it can be a Thran Dynamo, and uh, that can take us into Foundry Inspector, which will make our artifacts cost one less. And then that can be both a Mask of Memory and a Doubling Cube as well, so that we can double up the amount of mana in our pool. Mask of Memory has us draw two and discard one when we hit our opponent with the equipped creature. And obviously emptying our hand is good with the Sandstone Oracle in play, because that can refill our hand quite nicely. This assumes that our opponent has cards in hand, but I'm assuming that he's going to in Bant and as an Enchantress player. Plenty of means to draw cards in Enchantress decks. So seeing an Estrid hit play now, tapping down the Enchanted Land and... Oh, and then they went for untapping the Overgrowth with the plus two on this. Obviously the land is enchanted, so untap that. And managed to get down a Marari's Wake. Alright, there's a duplicate which could come in handy for us. Um, with Double Strike on the Fire Shrieker, we could get rid of the Commander, which is probably a good idea. Mask of Memory only triggers on us hitting a player, unfortunately. So, alright, let's tap down all of our mana. And then we can go for the Doubling Cube. And that gives us 12 mana in total. So then it's Fire Shrieker. Uh, 4 mana Khan as well. And then we want to make sure to put the Fire Shrieker on the Foundry Inspector before we run out of mana. So that will be a 3-2 with Double Strike to deal with the Commander. Uh, we can go on Mystic Forge for 3 mana as well. Alright, and there's a Jeweled Lotus that we can play off the top. That will simply buff our Commander and be there in time for when Khan needs replaying. Or when it swings in, it obviously buffs the Khan as well to a 5-5. Uh, there is an Urza's Legacy we will be drawing into next turn. Mask of Memory with the Floating Mana can go on the Khan. And that is a very productive turn 4. Go through to Attacks. Throw our Foundry Inspector at the Estrid. And we're challenging our opponent to do something to us now. They do have double mana and 5 cards in hand, so at the very least can recast their Commander. we we'll go for a board wipe maybe. Alright, forcing them to recast their commander is really good. That wastes six of their mana. Untapping all their permanents again, so going up to five loyalty once more. And they do get four mana from the planes being tapped down. Six mana floating in total here. We took a damage to the Painland for some blue mana, which might be relevant. Tapping into something big here though, that is a Temporal Mastery, so an extra turn. Dryad of the Elysian Grove is the first card our opponent casts on the second turn. And then untapping with the Estrid again, so that goes up to 7 loyalty. And yeah, we'll be able to get the limit break off on that. And then we see a spark double. So making another copy of the Estrid, they will untap the land again. Only saving grace here is our opponent only has 3 cards in hand, but one of them is Baby Teferi. Not doing too much instant speed anyway, I don't think. So plussing on the Teferi. Oh goody, a time warp, so another extra turn. Only one card in our opponent's hand, but like I said, Estrid can go for the limit break next turn if needs be. Now we see a Rabble Rousing to make some tokens. Our opponent doesn't have too many creatures. Now this Estrid is going to untap the planes. And then the original being sacrificed, minus seven, mill seven cards, return all non-aura enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield, then do the same for auras. So in comes the Radiant Dawn. And Ifara, God of the Polis. Only one card left in our opponent's hand, but has enough mana to replay the Estrid. And then untapping again with the plus two ability. Plusing on Baby Teferi as well. 
All right, so do we want to see the Urza Saga next turn? I imagine we'll hit a land at some point, and that's going to be way too slow, apparently. So, uh, yeah, paying a life into that and exiling that to get into something else is probably going to be a good idea. Okay, Jorah's Familiar is just another Foundry Inspector. We can get into the Sensei's top, then that won't be half bad. Uh, if Farah draws our opponent a card, we get a bunch of mana with the Khan. Okay, and there's an Urza's Power Plant. So, uh, exile the top card, because we can't play lands. Alright, and there's an Oblivion Stone, which is probably worth getting into. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do everything in the first main phase, so... Let's tap down a bunch of mana, and go for the doubling cube again. So that gets us a heap of mana. We've got uh, 28 mana there. So we can play the Joyra's Familiar for 3 mana. And that makes the Duplicant only cost 4. That can get rid of the Heliod, because I really don't like the flash shenanigans that that can do. Maybe getting rid of Ifara is better because of the card draw, but I mean we're up against it here anyway. Our opponent doing something in response. <laughs> As a heroic intervention, of course he does. So we might be relying on the Oblivion Stone, unfortunately. Play at the Oblivion Stone. Alright, there's a Khan's Silex as well. I uh, could go for four with that. And get rid of, yeah, the Planeswalkers and the Gods. I mean, we'll play it regardless. It's only one mana. Alright, there's a Traxos as well, which will only be two mana. Uh, there's a Moon Silver Key, which will be free untaps the Traxos whenever we play one of our spells. Okay, a Voltaic Key is free as well. And then we see a land on top, so now's the time to shuffle with the Moon Silver Key. Probably should have untapped the Doubling Cube first, actually. Uh, anyway, I forget all the different combos is the problem. So maybe it's Dreamstone Hedron here. Yeah, we'll go for that. Uh, okay, an Ugin on top is really good. So let's untap the Doubling Cube. Make some more mana with Doubling Cube. Okay, that bumps us up to uh, 24, I think that is. Play the Ugin. That means our the spells are going to be four less to cast here. <laughs> Which is pretty insane. Another land on top with the Urza's Tower. So then we'll go for a two mana Dreamstone Hedron. Uh, we could plus on the Ugin to get rid of the land. Uh, we haven't made a land this turn. We can't make Tron because we've already exiled one of the pieces. I think we just sacrifice to draw cards here. So sack the Dreamstone Hedron to draw more cards. And there is an Ugin, which is an insane draw. So uh, go for the Mana Crypt. Uh, I think we play the Urza's Tower. I think we have to get down the Ugin before I accidentally put too much mana into something else. So that is a 5 mana Ugin. Yeah, apparently Mystic Forge is good in colourless decks, who knew? So that is X is 5, I think. And that is a one-sided board wipe off the Ugin. Assuming our opponent can't do anything, and there we go. That's looking like a pretty concise win for us. Our opponent scoops, and yeah, wasn't looking too hopeful there, but like I said, Mystic Forge is a good card, apparently. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.